How's it going folks and welcome to Reptile News, the news source that brings you up-to-date updates on everything happening about reptiles around the world. We have a couple updates for you guys including our big story, the alligator attack during a five-year-old's birthday party. That is a title that I thought I would never say in a video. But first things first, before we get into the big story, I do want to talk about a couple of U.S. ARC updates that are going on. Uh, the current updates, and of course, any U.S. ARC date when bills are being passed trying to ban our rights as reptile keepers is always a struggling notion. Uh, this one, however, hits a little bit too close to home. Uh, as you guys know, I've been planning a move over to North Carolina here shortly within the year of 2022. And now we are getting bombarded in North Carolina of bill after bill trying to ban reptiles. All right. Oh, sorry guys, I forgot my co-host. Well, one second. This is our co-host Dante, the blue and gold macaw. Uh, don't ask him reptile questions, he doesn't know any. He's here to be the eye candy. Uh, he does know how to say cracker though. Cracker? Good bird. That's all he does, that's it. She just get those crumbs all over the back and on my chair. Alrighty, folks, so let's get into some of these US ARC updates. Uh, these are all pertaining to North Carolina. Right now we do have alerts and alerts in Wake County, Riley, North Carolina, Wake County, North Carolina, and actually North Carolina state itself. Now remember folks, North Carolina is only one out of three states that actually has no statewide reptile bans or exotic bans whatsoever. In these states, you can actually own whatever you want statewide. They leave it up to the individual town and county bases to decide these exotic, ex exotic laws. Uh, most of them being very um, open and lenient with reptiles and exotic. The same with the statewide ban over in North Carolina, the entire state ban. Uh, there's there's not too much to say about it. It looks like this has been marked over into the next session. The session's about to end here fairly shortly, I believe within a couple of weeks. Uh, so uh, they felt like they didn't have enough time to actually try to move this bill. Uh, now let's head into the Riley bill over in North Carolina. Uh, we've gotten quite a few updates. The first draft of this bill was very confusing. The term exotic was super vague. Uh, even with the second draft, uh, let's see if we can get a quote going on over here. So it looks like the new terms for the second draft is going to be wild and dangerous animals instead of the before term in the first draft being wild or exotic. Uh, so we're pretty much saying if animals are wild, dangerous, things like that. So I believe what they're trying to go for here, and I'm just paraphrasing, is they're trying to target non-domestic animals. So that, of course, is going to be a huge hit to the reptile community. Uh, we don't have any domestic pets. I don't believe, in my opinion, reptiles are domesticated. Uh, however, of course, this can also affect the venomous community. And the big cat is another one. Of of course, Tiger King, we've all heard about Tiger King. Uh, well, uh, the big cat game is not going well ever since Tiger King, we'll just say that much. Of August 17th, we haven't got any new updates. It does look like this is going to be put into draft as an amendment and a hearing will be heard on the next city council and a future city council meeting, sorry. Uh, remember guys, make sure to go check out USR. You can check out all these meetings. You can send your email. They list all the information of the senators that you need to put. It takes two minutes of your time. Just copy and paste, send it over with your email. Give them a call, take a couple minutes out of your time. Let's try to get these overturned. If not for the reptile community, please do it for your boy. I don't want to move to North Carolina and then North Carolina be like, hey, by the way, you can't own exotic animals. That is like the whole reason I'm going to North Carolina. <laughs> And check out US Arc, folks. They have all the information right here. Who to contact, email, <laughs> who to contact, email list, and everything like that. It's really good. It's really easy. It takes two seconds. I'll have the link right down there. And also, guys, if you are a reptile owner and a reptile business, anything of the sorts, make sure you're supporting US Arc through their membership program. It's it's as low as five dollars a month, so it's five dollars a a price of one cup of coffee from Starbucks could help you fight for your rights and keep your rights as reptile owners, folks. But let's get into the big story. The story of the alligator attack during a five-year-old's birthday party. Uh, as I can see here, looking, this happened in Utah. Um, a center employee, it looks like it was the Utah Scales and Tails with did this birthday party, as I'm seeing, uh, something along these lines. So let's roll the clip, let's see what happens, then let's talk about it a little bit. Ah, and that was the moment right there, folks. Like I said, it only takes a second for a miscalculation to turn into a bad day. Uh, however, instead of this being somewhere like a leopard gecko, beard, or dragon bite, uh, this is a six-foot alligator, it looks like. Uh, not a fun time. I imagine this um, doesn't end very well. Let's, uh, let, let, let's keep on. Let's keep rolling. Oh, 
watching this. Um, oh man, that looks like it's like the most painful thing. Jesus Christ. Um, it does look like she was doing some good stuff. You can see she was rolling with the gator. Uh, however, I did notice in one of those things, she did not roll one time with the gator, but her hand still rolled, which uh, I can only imagine the pain that is going through her right now. That is just um, Jesus. We have coming over here the man, the myth, the legend, random citizen from a dude's birthday party that jumps in with the gator. This guy's got some gusto. He's got, he's got some big ones. That's all I'll say about that. Ah, so it looks like at this point in time, my boy Darth Gator has had enough of the gentleman snuggling him up front. He's thinking to himself, you know what? This just ain't worth it anymore. Uh, I'm done. We're getting out of here. I'm aborting this plan. And he finally lets go of the young lady's hand. Very good. Very nice. Now, it's not very often in these kinds of scenarios where we have not one, but two distinct, and this is when he realized he messed up. My boy goes in, saves her, she gets out, and he's left there, snuggling the gator that just bit someone. <laughs> I, as a man that probably, I, I, I saw an interview with him, this guy doesn't own reptiles, he's not a reptile guy. As a man that doesn't own any reptiles and just went in there, went, went to be a hero, did the right thing, and is now stuck there snuggling a gator, I can only imagine what is going through my man's head right now. Oh boy. Now I'm not here to make any critiques about this. My gator experience is little to none when it really comes down to it. And I'm not making critiques about this gentleman. I mean, this is the first time he's probably been on a gator. It, it's, that's all good and dandy. He's doing the best he can. Um, homeboy looks like he's got his hands on only the top jaw of the gator, not the full snout, just, <laughs> Just where the, the teeth are. I am. Um, ah, oh man. I feel for. I feel for this man. This looks like a scary situation. I would be absolutely terrified if I was uh, this guy. But um, future reference. Both, both jaws. Not a. Uh, not just the top one. And it looks like that is the wrap of the video. The gentleman gets out there unscathed and now we just are left in the dark with what's happening until additional news stories came out. As far as what I've read up to when this was posted, uh, it does look like the lady does still have her hand. The hand's gonna stay intact and they have a pretty high optimism that the hand is gonna have mobility still. Now, if it will have full mobility or some mobility, that is left to be determined. However, what can be surmised is a lot of surgery is gonna be taking place, but she is definitely still going to keep the hand. This definitely isn't like the last reaction video we did with the 11 foot python bite video. That one was just screaming inexperience, uh, oh, it's borderline neglect with that tank setup, and then of course, just stupidity and not understanding the snake's body language when that person got bit. Uh, no, this story is actually a completely different situation. I can see that it was just a simple mistake, a simple accident. It was just one second of a misplaced timing thing, not moving the hand fast enough, putting the hand in the wrong direction, whatever it might be, that didn't lead to this horrible, horrible incident. I think it's anyone's whose fault to blame. The gator was just being a gator and the lady was just being a trainer. She made a simple mistake. However, as we stated earlier, this mistake just happened to be instead of something like a leopard gecko, it's going to be something like, again, an American alligator. Now, here's the biggest 
issue with this video, and I'm sure as you guys have noticed with any viral video that happens with exotic animals in the private uh, citizen's ship, or whatever you want to call that, um, this is a... Uh, press is having a field day with this one. The press is having an absolute field day with this. Uh, media reports after media reports of giant gator attack at five-year-old's party. Oh my god, massacre, blah, blah, blah. Uh, just instituting and really getting into the fact of exotic animals are dangerous, which a lot of people fail to realize is, uh... The exotic community, and specifically the reptile community, I think most exotic community, if we're talking about like big cats, uh, primates, uh, reptiles, elephants, rhinos, whatever, I don't think, do people own rhinos? Can I own a rhino? In these situations is, it's a one and done deal. Uh, it really, leg legislation and the media and of course the animal rights activists, HSUS, PETA, when we're talking about these people, uh, it takes one person, one video to drive more and more bands. I am very confident in mine, and I'm sure US Arc is very confident in their heads and they're getting prepared for the just barrage of legislation we are gonna have about crocodilians and large gators. The real issue happens with these videos is not the keepers in fault, not the animals fault, not scales and tails fault, it's the dumbasses that go on, they record it, and then they post it, and it just spreads like wildfire. Of course, the average citizen is not thinking about, oh, you know, I probably shouldn't post this because, let, I mean, what's gonna happen to the reptile keeper's rights? No, no, the average citizen in the uh, America is going, oh, gator bite, post, 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 look at gator bite. <laughs> I'm sorry, America, but it's true. Don't tell me it's not true. It sucks, it really sucks. It's spreading like wildfire, the media has had attention for it, and it has been going on for days and days and days now of constant news articles surrounding this in all a negative light within the reptile community. I don't think there's much to be done here. All we can do is prepare for the bans that are gonna be taking place. Um, it sucks, it really sucks. It seems with crocodilians and venomous snakes, I feel like we're kind of like on our last barrage of it before like we are just our rights are just slowly and slowly being sucked away for no no reason yes the alligator bit the lady can we talk about the number of dog attacks ecological impact that cats and dogs that we just love so much all these furry cute little animals that are having an impact on our environment no we are going to take reptiles the reptiles that if you actually look at side by side statistics of reptile deaths in america versus canine deaths in america hmm which one seems larger which one is vastly more villainized gee i wonder actually i'm having trouble finding independent reports from like pet reptiles it seems like it's a lot of venomous stuff and even then the numbers are vastly lower than canine but what I did find is this beautiful HSUS article going on about it that from um, what do we got here uh, 1990 to 2012 adults other than snake owners caretaker or attacked by constrictors eight constrictors that killed people from 1990 till 2012 40 Five. 568 deaths in dogs, 45 in snakes. Constrictors. And they want to ban the constrictors. Beautiful. Folks, I think I've made my uh, rant long enough. It seems this video really has no ill will. It was a simple accident that led to an unfortunate incident. There was no uh, malicious intent or just stupidity involved. Like I said, it was just an accident. An unfortunate accident that is gonna cause, of course, the barrage of legislation and bills to try to ban these beautiful creatures that we love so much as reptile owners. Let's wrap up another episode of Reptile News. I do not do this uh, weekly. I just, I don't wanna go hunting for news. If a news article happens to pop up your boy will make a video about it and of course Dante the parrot will be here well, he doesn't like me but he loves being on camera okay bud enough showboating enough showboating Jesus come on <laughs> Folks, if you want to see some more reptile news pages, make sure to like the video, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Until next time, we'll have our regular broadcasted video. I felt like I should make a video on this topic because, of course, it's getting out of control. And I want to put my spit on it because old Dakota, um, sorry, sorry, sorry. Don't want to get blown on. Uh, old Dakota, you know, I, I, I don't know. That's going to wrap it up for today, folks. Until next time, we'll see you then. But until then, 